Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this, this evening. This is the one you've been waiting on. We've been working on this Williams Jumpin' Jacks pinball machine from 1963. This vintage of pinball is a little... you don't see it as much as some of the other ones. So this is a 63 Williams Jumpin' Jacks and it doesn't work. We got it in and it didn't work. And so we did a video, if you haven't been around, uh, of cleaning all of the switches, adjusting all the relays, uh, rebuilding the stepper, uh, the uh, the score reels and the stepper uh, units and, and all of that. And it still doesn't work. So we did a second video of us fixing up the play field, which had some little issues. But we fixed them up, worked on the plastics, put it all back together, did some paint here and there. And ended up with a very nice looking machine, in my opinion. Am I wrong? Am I wrong here, people? Or is this not a beauty? It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Uh, so now we got to get it working. It doesn't work. Doesn't do a damn thing. Okay, look. Start button. 19 credits. Well, look what happens when I hit the start button. Nothing. So that's where we're at, folks. But guess what? I know a guy who can fix pinball machines. Me. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to work through it. And all we need, all we shall need, is basic tools like a screwdriver, stuff like that. You, you ought to have all them. If you don't have, I should mention, I should mention this. The whole point of my videos is not to show you, hey, I'm a badass pinball repairman. No, 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 no. If that's what you've been thinking, as some people have, you've been thinking wrong. The point of my videos is, hey, if you see an old pinball machine near you, go pick it up because you can fix it. If I can fix it, you can fix it. And you don't need special tools. You don't need much of anything except your brain, a little bit of time, the will to do it. And the schematics. So you pretty much have to have the schematics. These are like $15 at the most, right? You can get about any of them from pinballresource.com. Uh, most of them are, or a lot of them, I should say, are online. You can just find a scan of them. But if you do have to pay for them, yeah, hey, it's 15 bucks. It's worth it, you know? And it's worth it to keep it in the, uh, the machine. And then the other cool thing about it is they print them on this big, long piece of paper, just like the original ones were. So it's kind of a neat thing. It's not like it's on little 8 by 10 sheets of paper, you know. It's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's just like the originals, printed the same way. And they really help you fix them. So my whole point in doing these videos isn't to brag about, hey, I got another one fixed. It's to enjoy these old machines that have seen better days, that needs some work and to try to convince people out there that they can do it too. If you see one cheap, pick it up, man. You can fix it. Or one man, I should say. Oh, look. My drop target fell down slightly. I wonder if I hit it or if some pressing the start button did it. Let's try it again. I must have just hit it. Oh, I thought it was trying to Christine on me. If you haven't seen Christine, Stephen King movie where the car starts fixing itself. It's the dream of all of us people that work on old stuff that it'll start christening on us. Can you imagine if this student prince here started fixing itself? You think it or I are going to be fixing that? Mm, not sure. I was talking to Joe the other day and he said, are, were you planning on just leaving this play field? I mean, I think if we repainted the cream, it would look a lot better. <laughs> so I might end up working on it. I have another Jubilee. This is not the one that we spent so much time on before. This is a different one. Uh, I have this amazing Spider-Man, and it is amazing. It's coming up very soon. And then look at this one. I am excited for this one. This is These are my favorite types. I don't think very many people will agree with me, but these are my favorite types. This is a Gottlieb... Gottlieb... Masquerade... And it has a animated back glass. Man, we're a little dark. Let me lighten you up so you can see it. There's a picture of a woman back there with a fan 
over her face and it moves out of the way and stuff. And uh, it's kind of goofy masquerade theme. And it's got the old school play field with some kind of big dial on it. So we picked this up at an auction very inexpensively. And uh, I'm going to fix that up and be happy to do it. We also have this uh, Williams Pat Hand here. Very strange game. We've got a skate ball here that we're working on for a gentleman. That's not ours. So anyway, we're going to be fixing up some. So if you see one that's that needs a little work, all it needs is somebody to take the time to work on it. So go ahead and give it a shot. You can probably pull it off. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of paper uh, so I can write down some stuff and uh, start using my brain. And we'll look through these schematics and see if we can figure out what's happening and uh, what's not happening. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to start reading through the schematics. So when you plug the machine in, there's no power. And this is on a 1963 vintage Williams. And I'm using the word vintage to mean uh, era, right? So a 1968 Williams may be a little different. But in 1963, this is how they were doing it according to these schematics. So when it's dead, there's nothing on. If you hit the, the flipper buttons, nothing happens, right? And if you hit the start button... All the lights come on. It sounded like it subtracted a credit, but it did not. And you hear a click down underneath the, the, the play field. Okay. So when it's completely off, the only thing that will get it to come on, or well, the thing that I've noticed that gets it to come on is when you hit the start button. So is that what it should be doing? Okay. Here is the replay button switch, right? So that's what they call that. Replay button switch. Let's see if I've got the focus on. Nope, but I do now. Bam! Technology, baby! Okay, replay button switch. That So I, when I press the start button, I'm pushing that together. Okay, so here's the schematics. Here is the power plug. Plugged into the wall, right? So one side of it goes through a fuse and then runs over here and does all of this, right? And then one side of it comes over here and plugs into these three relays and then also the transformer. So you see the power, one side is always connected to the transformer. The transformer is what's going to make everything work, all the lights working on it. But this side is not. Look, it stops. So it, it needs to get from here to here. So the only way for it to do that is to connect through the 25 cent relay, a switch on the 25 cent relay, a switch on the coin relay, a switch on the lock relay, or a switch on the reset relay. That's the only way to turn on power to the transformer, which is going to turn on everything, right? So what's happening when I hit the start button, right? Well, when I hit the re they call it the replay button. When I hit the replay button, I'm connecting the power from the wall, one side of it, through the switch, through the zero at zero replay step up, or does that say replay step up, I guess is what it's saying. But basically, uh, or maybe replay something unit, maybe. It basically, if you've got more than one credit, so if you're, if you're off uh, more than zero credit, so if you're off zero on the thing, it makes this switch close. So that switch will open when you get to zero credits. That's why when you hit the start button and there's no credits, nothing happens. But if there is at least one credit, because that only opens when it gets to zero, that switch, right? We're at 19 right now, so we're nowhere near that being open. So that's shut. When I shut that by pressing the button, it's, it connects power from this side through the switch, through the but the. Uh, switch on the replay unit in the back, right? And if the lock, if the lock relay is connected, <clears throat> it turns on the coin relay, right? Or um see what other ways the coin switch will do the same thing. So like if the anti-cheat switch is not open from somebody beating on it, <laughs> the power will connect through here through the coin switch, through either the start trip relay or the lock relay, 
and turn on the coin relay. Okay, so we're connecting there. That's connected. Is the lock relay connected? Here's the lock relay. How does it get power? From the transformer through the kickoff switch, which is on the bottom of the cabinet. It's just a switch that opens. It's usually closed. And it's connected to the transformer. So, oh, that's a normally closed. Am I right about that? So that's a normally closed switch. So if the game is off, the lock relay has closed, that's connected. You hit the start button, the power connects through all this, the lock relay is closed because it hasn't pulled in yet, and it pulls in the coin relay. Well, now that the coin relay pulls in, it turns on, it, uh, turns on this switch, the coin relay, which connects power through the coin relay to the transformer. So now the transformer is on and it powers all this stuff up. So since the kickoff switch is normally connected, unless you kick the bottom of the machine, it turns on the lock relay. When the lock relay turns on, it opens this switch up, <laughs> right? So now, when you hit the start button, if it's not at zero, it connects through the start trip relay, which I guess would be if the game hasn't started yet. Hmm, have I got that right? I believe I do. Yeah, you see how it all works. It all works on top of itself. Like you have to look and see what's connected and what's supposed to be open and what's supposed to be closed. I wonder how it handles multiple players though. Hmm, it's only a two player game though. It's like if your game has started, the start trip relay would be open and the lock relay would be open. Maybe the start trip trip relay goes back after the uh, everything resets. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure that out later. Or maybe we won't. So whenever we hear the, uh, whenever we press the button, I wonder what we're hearing work. I'm going to open it up and see what two things are making noise when we press the button and that'll help us figure out how far through this list it's getting. Alright, after looking inside of it, the thing in the back is the replay unit reset coil clicking and the thing in the bottom is the advanced unit reset coil clicking. So, here is the advanced step up unit advanced stepper unit reset coil. That's one of them that's pulling in. So how is it getting power? Well, it's always connected on that side. And on this side, it either gets power through the number three trough switch, which is, uh, you know, what one of the balls sits on inside the out hole, um, or through the coin relay. So we already established that the coin relay is pulling in. So whenever that closes because the coin relay is now in so the the open is when how it normally is if it's not engaged they're blowing me up on tweeter <laughs> texter uh so that'll that'll close and then this is one of the the uh switches on the score motor so as it turns around uh it makes different things close and so as that score motor starts turning around it eventually gets to this point where this switch connects here Power runs through. It runs through the coin relay that's connected. It runs through and it pulls in the advanced step up, the advanced stepper unit reset coil that we're hearing. And then this is the replay unit reset coil. So this is the other one that we're hearing. How is it getting its power? Come down through here. All right. Boop, 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 boop. This game relay is usually closed, so it's closed. And our coin relay is now closed because we know it's coming and pulling in. The reset relay is usually closed because it hasn't been pulled in yet. And then this is another one of the score motor switches. So as the score motor turns, it makes this connect. The reset relay isn't pulled in yet, so it's still connected. Power runs through it. It runs through the coin relay that we have connected. It runs through the game relay that we have connected. And bam, turns on the replay unit reset coil. So that's where all we're getting so far. All right? So we want like the start relay to start because we want to start the game, right? So how does the start relay start? That's what we're not getting. Well, if you go back here, it can 
start through itself. Now how does that happen? So there's a switch on the start relay. The reason that's there is to hold itself on. And the reason for that is if it's started by the start trip relay. If the start trip re relay falls out, you want it to hold itself on while it's pulled in. It will hold itself on until the motor turns around enough to make this uh, switch disconnect. So it's just a way of holding a coil on for a revolution, or I guess it's a third of a revolution of the uh, score motor. But it can't turn itself on, it just holds itself on. So the only way it gets power is through the start trip relay. So how does the start trip relay pull in? That's what we need to figure out. That's what we need to get going next. So the start trip relay right, is pulled in when the game relay that is normally up here comes to here. So the start trip re relay will not start until the game relay comes on. Oh my lord, can you see how complicated this is getting? So where is the game relay? Uh, we're looking, we're looking, surely it's not way over here. Game relay. It's always connected. Holds itself on. It's connected through either the out hole index relay or the tilt latch relay. <laughs> Which is connected through a switch on the game over relay. Right? So that switch has to be normally shut. And this switch has to be normally shut for it to do its thing. All right? Our whole index relay. Mm -hmm. So it could be this switch, or it could be this switch, or it could be this switch, but we need to figure out which one of those is making it so that the game relay won't come on. It could actually be the switch on itself too. So I'm going to look at those four switches and we'll see if we can find one that's misadjusted. Okay folks, so I kept looking at the schematics and basically you could, it was impossible to get the game relay to pull in uh, if the game over relay was pulled in. Could not be done. <laughs> So what needed to happen was this reset coil pull in, but it couldn't pull in unless the game relay was, was tripped. But then I started to remember and I just cleaned everything in it. And when I did, I was moving all those around and everything. So I was tripping some, I wasn't tripping some. So I pulled the reset relay, the, the relay in by hand, which reset all of them. And then whenever I plugged it in, it kind of did its thing and a couple of them dropped and blah, 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 and it, it, it appeared to reset it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the play field. I'm going to uh, turn some of the, the scores so that they have numbers on it. I'm going to unplug it and then plug it back in so we get it all dead, and then we'll try it again from the start now that I've reset the, uh, the bank the way that I guess it's supposed to uh, be whenever it's turned off if somebody like <clears throat> me hasn't been in there screwing around with it. So we'll see if that's got us any closer to starting a game. Okay, so it's a huge pain to turn the score reels by hand, so I just got the best I could on there, people. <laughs> on this, on this uh, type, it's hard to get in there. So we're going to try to start it, see if we get any, if it fares any better now. Well, it sounded good, but did I hear the ball come out? There it is. All right, cool. Okay, so yeah, reset. We're on ball number one. One person can play. Let's see if we can start a two player. Holy moly. Holy moly. Okay, so I'm going to take this piece of paper here. People have asked us about our notepads. This company, this printing company, are some friends of ours in Gastonia. Gastown. <laughs> and they, uh, they bring us these by from time to time. Old school marketing, you know. They print this stuff and they, they bring us some pads of paper. And we use them in our videos, so we're probably marketing them all over the world. People have made fun of their last name in Europe. But, you know, that's y'all's problem. 
I know these people to be good people. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you've watched my videos before, what I like to do is just play them by hand and test everything. Make sure everything resets. So the ball is out. Oh, and on these older ones like this, it has a manual ball lift, so you have to push this. I need to oil it a little bit and see it should spring back out. But you have to push that in, which pushes the ball up to the top. Um, so all of that seemed to have worked pretty good. All right, so we shoot the ball up, and let's see if anything will score. So uh, these say 10 points when lit. Let's see what happens if I hit it when it's not lit. Ha! Isn't that amazing? Okay, and these say on bumpers. So let's see what happens when I hit that. <sighs> Look at that. So what should it do when I hit it again, now that they're lit? Ten points! Look at that! Now let's try this one. Ten points, great. Let's see what the jet bumper does. It's just one. I guess that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, and then we should be able to turn them off by hitting this. Psh, beautiful. Uh, and let's see what the jet bumper does when they're off. Still a point. Okay. Now, I noticed whenever I do this that it changes these lights up here. Let's see what these, these are called dead bumpers. They don't actually kick the ball. Gave me one point and it turned them on. Gave me one point and turned them off. It looks like a bunch of the stuff whenever you hit it. Yeah, those are one as well. So let's see if we roll over to 30. We did, great. Um, yeah, so these are turning on and off depending on the ones. So when the ones hit, it turns them on and off. So this says advance when lit. So there is a bonus down here that is set on 50 points, or the whole score it says. Set on 50 points. So if I hit it now, that must not be it. It must be this roll over here. So I get 10 points and it's lit, so it should advance when lit. So we're at 32. Now we're at 42, 52, perfect, okay? So all of that seems to be working fine. Um, there's a switch here, one point, one point. Perfect, perfect. One point, that works, one point, that works. Um, all right, so these say 50 points when lit. So we're at 56, that should send us to 106. So that'll check if the reels will turn fast, you know, da, 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 da. you want it to be able to score everything. And it'll also test if after that gets to 90, if it rolls over to 100. So we should end up with 106. Boy, thick. All right, so let's try it again. Boy, that's working great. So let's try this side. Perfect, folks. That's about everything. So we've got our drop targets. Targets, 10 points and advance, or 50 points when lit. So it should advance, and I should get 10 points. We're at 306. Well, that one doesn't fall all the way. But it did send us to 316, and it advanced it. Let's see if this one falls all the way. I had my, I had my hand on that. Um, so what happened there? Well, I had my hand on that, so I got one point, and then that going down gave me 10 points, 327. So I think that's right, and it advanced it. So let's try just one of them. Okay, so that's right. It gave me 10 points, and then it advanced, and it says 50 points when lit. So what it's saying is if you land in the hole, you get 50 points. But I think, hmm. 10 points in advance or 50 points when lit. Okay, so what they're saying is the first one's 10, but the second one's 50. Because now this one's lit, so that target will be 50. But that one's acting up. i got to make it where it falls down better. But if you land in the hole, I think you lose your ball. So I don't know if that's what we want to do, but hey, let's try it. <laughs> so the hole will score 300, and I think that's all I'll get. I will get. Uh, we're at 337. So let's see what happens here. Three 
337, and now I have 737, so I got 400 points. So it seems like maybe it gave me 50 points, maybe twice, because I uh, the switch is touchy. Then it go da kind of quick. And then it gave me the 300 that was the whole score, which would be 400 points, 737. Okay, so we're going to start writing down stuff that's messed up. The left drop sticks. Right? Right whole double scores. Usually when there's something double scores or something, it's because the switch is a little dirty. And I, now I already cleaned all of them, but... The switch is a little dirty or adjusted a little weird so that it like bounces when it goes through and it ends up scoring twice. Okay, but anyway, so that's that. We're on to the second player. Push the ball up. Oh yeah, the ball. Ball elevator. Sticks. Okay, um... I guess I should test the flippers and see if anything screws up whenever you hit the flippers. That's going to be a strong flipper, folks. Let's see about this one. Ooh, that's not good. When they do this, you see exactly what that's doing there? They call, What do they call that? They call that... Uh, it's not shotgunning, it's um, machine gunning. Is that what they call it? Anyway, when it does that, it's always the same thing. The middle wire on the coils broke. Right, flipper, machine gunning. That's very fixable, folks, very fixable. Okay, uh, okay so we want to see if the second player scores. Oh. See how these aren't lit up? So now we can see if those score 10 like they're supposed to. They do. They do. All right, that's cool. All right, all that seems to be working. Um, I haven't got it to do the 100 points when lit yet. Oh, look, it, it left the drop targets the way they were, too. I wonder if that's how that should be. You know what I mean? So it switched over to second player, but his right drop target is already down, and it's not telling him that it's 50 points when lit. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, all this is working the same as it was for the first player. So I'm going to go in. I should just get 50 points and 10 points, I would think. So it should be one... 62 when it's done. Nope, I just got 50 points. 152, because it's the whole score, not the target score. So that first time, I don't know if I should have got that double score on the right hole, and it still didn't reset the drop targets. Let me get this guy down. Okay, when it drops, they both reset. Yeah, I don't know how you get that on. Maybe I have to drop them both. No? Maybe I have to get all the way to the top. That's it, when you get all the way to the top. Okay, so let's try that again. Oh no, okay, these out hole ones say 100 when lit, so let's see if they work. 998, yep. Okay, so let's drop them again. So I should get 50 points, because it's lit. We're at 998. Now we're at 1048, and they do it the, uh, uh, the old school way where they just light up a one. <laughs> it's just a light. I wouldn't have it any other way, people. Okay, so if I go in there, I should get 300 points. I don't think I should score the actual hole. I mean, the actual drop target. That was my screw up before. So we're at 300 points. Let's see what we get. It's 
So we ended up with 1348. That's right, isn't it? I lost track. I believe that's right. Maybe I had a fluke that other time. Oh, and it, it is advancing properly, one player to two player, ball one to ball two, all that stuff. Okay, so we've uh, we've checked out everything. I guess we still need to keep seeing if that right hole double scores and if the drop target should reset at the end of each ball. So 50 points. We already checked that like that. So let me advance it. Okay, so I'm at 202. When I go in, I should get, I should end up at 502. Yeah, that's good. That's how it's supposed to be. Maybe I should try the other scores just to see if they're all doing their thing. So 50 points. Now we're at 100 points. This is player one. We're at 1358. We should end up at 1450. 1458. 1458. Did you hear the knocker? I'm getting replays and crap because I'm up up high. Okay, so 100 worked. So let's try 150. Now we're at 150. Uh, we're at 522, so we should end up at 672. Perfect. Okay, let's move up to 200. We're at 1488. We should end up at 1688. I don't know how it did that, but it was perfect. Okay, and then finally we should get to 250. So we're at 712, we should end up at 962. Alright, so all that's working. I guess I should try to make sure that the left one... I gotta fix that, obviously. Alright, so we're at 150. We're on ball and play number 5, player 1, 1708. So it should end at 18... 58 and be the end, the last ball for him. Perfect. I mean, it sounds weird, does weird stuff, but it's scoring right. And it did not reset the drop targets, but I think that might be how it's supposed to be. This one's at 962, 50 points. We should end up at uh, 1,012. And game over. And it turned on the lights in the back box at game over. We got a few of them blinking. I still haven't replaced them all. Uh, okay, so let's look at this stuff. The only thing I want to do is look on the schematics and see if they are the right hold is not double score. I don't know why it did that one time or it seemed like it did. I probably just wasn't paying attention. I want to see if the drop targets are supposed to reset. What makes the drop targets reset? So let's check that out. So here we go. So the target reset relay is always connected on the right side. And on the left side, what makes it turn on is a switch on its uh, wait, the target a switch on the target reset relay. So it holds itself on, right, until the motor turns around a little bit. But what turns it on is if the right target switch is at the bottom and the left target switch is at the bottom. So the, in other words, the only way that it turns on, the only way the targets reset, is if both switches are down. Both uh, uh, drop targets are down. So if one of them's down, and the other one's up, it can never reset. So in other words, it's acting perfect. At the end of a ball, if only one of them's down, it will stay like that. At the end of a game, if only one of them's down, it will stay like that. If you, turn, if you unplug the thing and plug it back in and start a new game, if only one of them's down, it'll stay like that. So that's just how they, uh, that's just how they designed it. Uh, so let me work on that left one a little bit and see if, uh, 
see why it's sticking. I think it's just a physical thing where there's there was a bunch of grease on it, I think. Let me go check that. Okay, folks, so we have we had three problems. So the easiest one to fix was the ball elevator thing being stuck in. So simple as just putting some three in one oil on it. Now it always falls down before it was sticking up sometimes. And so what was happening was this shaft was just getting stuck in there because there was old oil and stuff on it that had dried and now it's bueno okay so that was the easiest one so the second easiest one was the drop target um, I took them both off and looked at them and the one was bent just slightly so whenever it it just it was having problems letting this little bar here pivot so when you hit it It just drops like that, and that spring pulls it down. So it was having a problem where it just didn't, it wasn't happy, right? But now, they fall great. Matter of fact, the left one might even fall a little better. I oiled it too, that's good. Everything's cool. Okay, uh, and then finally, the last problem was the flipper machine gunning, I believe it's called. So if you get one that does that, it's very common. What that always means, now this, if you looked at the older videos, uh, this coil was like real dark looking. Uh, whenever I tried to swap the sleeve on it, it did not allow me to, so I used a parts coil that I had in the back to replace it. It's the same part number and everything, it's just off another Williams game, and I put a new sleeve in it and everything. But if you look real close, the way these are wound, on that middle lug there, they have a big wire and a small wire. So what always happens is that one of the wires going to that middle lug is broke. Now on this one, it doesn't look broke, but it's not, it's not making it up to this lug here. It comes through the hole, but it doesn't come all the way up here to where it solders. So I'm gonna mess with that a little bit and re-solder that and get a better connection. Make sure I got a good connection to my end of stroke switch. And all of that combined should get it to stop machine gunning. But it's always a broken wire or something on this middle lug whenever one's doing what it was doing. Okay, folks, I found it. Now, while I was saying it goes to here, <laughs> now that I think about it, any wire that goes to here also goes to there or there. So, if you look, the wire on that one is where it's broke. See, it's not even connected. So if you ever get a situation, I think there's enough there that I can pull it out. If you ever get a situation where that's too short, you can actually unwind a whole uh, turn off of this spool if you needed to. And then it will turn it into a 28-399. All right, folks, so I got the flipper wire re-soldered. One's up, one's down, so it can't reset, right? Everything reset. Let's see if the flippers work. Both of them went down and it reset them. Oh, oh. You see, I'm kind of cheating by having the flippers a little. If they were down a little more, you'd lose the ball more often. I think we're all up and running, folks. So you know what that means. It means we're done. I can go home for the night. There are just a couple things left to do. And this one will be ready to sell. We gotta keep test playing it. There's a couple very minor things that are acting up. Like the lights on the one player uh, blink. So since they blink, it uh,
that needs to be looked at a little bit. There's a couple light bulbs at the back of the play field under the arch that I didn't replace. Um, I need to put the back door on so the bells aren't as loud. And we need to let the kids test play it. So we get, we get people coming into our shop all the time. And if we have a nice pinball machine like this set up, they'll play through it. When I put the light bulbs in the in the uh, back box, I replaced a couple of the uh, the ones in the title with blinkers. So whenever you're whenever you're black back, they they uh, blink a little bit. See how the one player the lights blinked off again? So just little stuff like that. But we'll figure that out. No big deal. That'll be a minor thing. So we got to clean it up a little bit, and then what I'll do is I will film another video showing off all the art, showing off how to play it, and then we'll play it several times and see what we can come up with. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you this evening. It's late, folks. I didn't have to do all this. I work for myself. I could have been home a long time ago, but no, I wanted to bring you this video. So I stayed late to film you this video, fix this machine on camera. But, uh... I'll probably sleep like a baby knowing that it's working again. 1963. And I fixed it. Mm, mm, mm. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. And we will see you whenever we do the other video. There is a link to Amazon below. If you click that, you don't have to sign up for anything or anything. If you remember to click that before you buy something on Amazon, it gives us some of Amazon's advertising money for uh, for the uh, whatever object, whatever you buy. So... You don't have to sign up for anything or anything. And we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Um, we had a gentleman the other day who bought a uh, new uh, monitor for his computer. That was pretty cool. Thank you, whoever that was. And uh, people just buy, been buying cool stuff. But you don't have to buy anything big either. Uh, people that buy, uh, a lot of people buy food and stuff on there. So that's cool too. So thank you to all the people that have been doing that. We appreciate it. Also, we've been telling everybody about our brother channel, not our sister channel, channel, our brother channel. My brother Donnie is literally, quite literally, my brother Donnie. And uh, if you check out his channel called My Brother Donnie, uh, he's doing a bunch of pretty crazy stuff. He is the craziest of the three of us brothers. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he bought an old mobile home and talked me into going in halvesies with him. And then the thing was destroyed. Everything in it was screwed up. So we had to fix it all. But it wasn't any problem. We got it all done. So we filmed all that. And uh, I have a lot of fun with him. Now we're working on an old building that we bought. It's pretty cool. And uh, he's got a uh, an old pickup truck that he bought. A 1988 uh, che Chevy Silverado uh, with a 454 in it. And buddy, that thing will haul. <clears throat> so uh, make sure to subscribe to his channel or check it out if you get the, ch the chance it has nothing to do with arcade games or pinball machines but it's always a lot of fun very entertaining so I will see you on the next video leave your comments below and let us know what you think so far and hopefully next time well definitely next time we'll play it much longer and uh, we'll show off the artwork and everything and uh, uh, we'll, we'll put the stamp on this jumping jacks